What's up guys? Uh, I'm in the Mach 1 from the Murphy Museum, headed to the Automobile Driving Museum. I have the car on display there today, uh, gonna be doing a variety of things, but I'm also gonna be bringing my good friend with me that uh, I kind of introduced to you the other day. I didn't tell you who he was, but today you're gonna find out a little bit about him. One of my best friends, known him a very long time, very unique guy. Oh, there are a lot of bicyclists out today. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce to you to longtime friend. This is Christopher Hubbard. Now, Christopher is an inventor uh, and does a lot of very unique things, and he has a very interesting look, as you can plainly see. He's traveled the world, eaten all kinds of amazing foods, done all kinds of incredible things, but he's never, ever had a Bristol Farms cookie. So today is your day, buddy. It's my day. And here is your cookie. That's the whole thing is for you. Now, I gotta give you a word of warning. And there is a warning label on there somewhere. If there is. That it is the most unbelievable cookie you will ever have in multiple lifetimes. It says the cookie. Yeah, it does. Get serious about chocolate. I'm not kidding. With you guys think chocolate. that this is maybe funny? Toast it with walnuts. Share the love. It's, it's serious. And you're not going to share the love, which is why I got my own cookie. <laughs> it's, like, it's outstanding. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, it just, there's a, a perfect combination of things. So Bristol Farms, I'm going to tag you guys. Freaking amazing cookie. It is an amazing cookie. Yeah. It's almost like a an oatmeal, walnut, dark chocolate, milk chocolate. <sighs> and the best part about it is that it's all yours. Wow. You don't have to share it with anyone. I don't know if I can make it through Maybe. it. We are seeing Ken, so he may want Holy something. Holy crap. Eat it quick. Okay, we got to go. for the top secret car show. It's not so top secret. Everyone's going to this show. It's crazy. Uh, it's about 6.30 in the morning and there are so many cars in this show. You can't even get into the space where the pre-73 cars are supposed to be, but we did. Looks like you, as a car, 
Thanks. <laughs> walk around with the bowl and have everyone dump their keys in the bowl and then they can all go home like uber or something leave the keys with us we will we'll drive it on the show we'll let everybody know how cool each car is individually over the next but 10 years i think it's a good idea would you guys want us to do that i'm pretty sure that's a good idea yeah uh and if we're gonna do that and we have the bowl sitting right here what car would you drive first you can't have the skyline but see, they're all cool. You can just put your hand in there and just grab whatever. Oh, yeah, that's what we should Doesn't do. Doesn't matter. Yeah. You just close your eyes. Close your eyes. Grab it. Grab a key and go. And then you got to find the car. Yeah. All <laughs> right. <laughs> you got to go around and press the button, and none of these cars pretty much have buttons. it doesn't have a remote. Some of the Ferraris do, I guess. <laughs> yeah. That's the fun. Yeah. So you just got to go and try to stick the key in the hole and see what happens. Scale 
lots of stuff going on, lots of incredible people. I don't know. I don't know what to say. It's just, uh, just kind of epic. There's lots of stuff going on. in a in a very rapid and interesting manner uh, as a result of that the the guys that run the show came to me today and they asked that I would relay this message to you guys everyone is super excited and super stoked that uh, that there's a place to go to to share your car and to share your car stories or things like that but these guys want to concentrate specifically on a a certain type of car. They want to make that central core area that you that you guys come to the the area where the pre 73 cars are, and as well as the back parking lot. They they want to reserve that area for those uh, pre 73 and lots and lots of classics. So if you have a kind of a newer car, they're asking you that you you come to the show, enjoy yourself. But when you first come in, if you drive through, go all the way to the back. Now I know it's going to be frustrating because you know you want to go to the show, you want to be able to show off your car. But the focus of of this particular show, which is at Trancas, pretty much everybody knows where it is, and and uh, and we know this, and it's just growing, it's getting bigger and bigger. But I want to help these guys out. I want to be able to relay that message to you guys because it's important. Every Cars and Coffee uh, show, including my own. Uh, you want to focus on a, a, a given type of vehicle because you're passionate about that vehicle. It's something that you love. It's something that you want to share. And maybe you grew up in that um, that scope, that area of those types of cars. There's not necessarily any way to control this uh, other than you know uh, putting up some signs and hoping people understand and and kind of follow them in. But you know when I do my show at Wheels and Waves, we have someone stand right at the at the entrance and direct specific cars as to exactly where they should go. That's very effective and these guys are doing that as best they can. It's just an epic show. It's just a lot of cars. Plus the cars are entering from a lot of different directions so there's not really a way to be able to control that. So if you go to Trancas uh, on the first Sunday of the month for, for this particular show which is a, a really great show and these guys do a fabulous job putting it on. We want to make sure that it's safe. We want to make sure that everyone has a good time and, and that they really enjoy themselves and they've asked me to just convey the message. If you have a newer car, newer than 73 uh, to bring it to the back lot and be able to, to help have those cars there and reserve the the front lots for those pre-73 cars. There's a variety of, of types of car people and when you develop a cars and coffee like what these guys have done and what uh, what it is that we've done you tend to invite those people that um, that share your enthusiasm you know as a as a an event holder of the show and these guys they love those pre-73 cars is what they're focusing on uh wheels and waves what we focus on is, is really those art cars it's the 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 builders and the the unique cars i mean i wouldn't mind having a show that had all 51 Chevy pickup trucks, as long as each one was an ind individual expression. What matters to me is that the cars that come in are truly unique. And a lot of the guys that go to the, the Upper Malibu show, uh, these guys are kind of collectors and, and high-end supercars, hypercars, uh, some some unique stuff, but these are cars that you basically buy at a, at a dealership and you can bring it to the show. Whether you happen to buy it in 1962 or happen to buy it, you know, brand new. But the types of people that attend these shows. I broke it down into six sections. I could be wrong. And it, you take each one of these as an individual item and then you can mix them with others. And I'll, I'll show you what I mean. First one I, br I bring up is a car designer, which is what I am. And a lot of the guys, we had Frank Sacito, we had Freeman Thomas, we had Derek Jenkins. All these guys are car designers, chief designers of car companies. These guys are a combination of a car designer and an automotive enthusiast. Maybe they're a collector, maybe they're a builder. But at their core, they're car designers. The second category is the car collector or even maybe even known as a car uh, Car investor, someone who, who you know uh, is a true automotive enthusiast, but they like just collecting cars. They don't.
don't necessarily want to build them. They, they just like to be able to buy something that maybe they grew up with and then share that car by driving it to a show. Like I said, there could be combinations. So you can be a collector slash builder. You can be a car designer slash collector. And speaking of builders, that's category three. So you have guys that have their own shop or they have a, a business where they, they build cars or they rest them on cars or they do a variety of things like that. The fourth category, the fourth are, in my opinion, the drivers, racers. You know, the guys that want to get in the car and they've got to want to go really fast. They could be pro drivers, they could be, you know, uh, guys that want to go to Willow Springs, things like that. Next category, the fifth category, are the, the journalists and the writers and the photojournalists that go to these shows and they take these pictures and they spread that wealth, they spread that love across the planet. They could be photojournalists slash builder slash collector. All these things work together in the pot. But the last category, the sixth category, encompass all of them. And that is that we're all enthusiasts. We all love cars. And if you think about individual people, let's take Jay Leno for a second. Not only is he an enthusiast, but he's a builder. He's not necessarily a car designer, but he's a collector. Does he race cars? Sure he does, but he doesn't necessarily take pictures. Another example is Jerry Seinfeld. He may collect cars, but he's not a photojournalist or a journalist. He doesn't necessarily write about cars. He's a big enthusiast, but he's not a car designer. And then you take yours truly for an example. Car designer slash enthusiast slash driver, and probably a few other minor things in there. But one thing's for sure, they all commingle. They all work together because we're just there to have a good time and to be able to share our love for cars. And speaking of cars, one little note, side note for Wheels and Waves coming up on February 18th. Our sponsor, our coffee sponsor is Sports Car Classics. Of those guys, we just went and saw, you know, some of the Jaguars that we're working on. Uh, my good friend, James Ritchie, he had that Opal GT that we featured on a vlog just a few days ago. We're gonna have a really good turnout for that show. So be sure if you have something really cool and you wanna share it, come on down. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. Be sure to hit the subscribe button. Hang out with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Even the dogs dig it. If you love cars, you're hanging out in the right place. This is Fireball Malibu Vlog, and our job is to help you improve your life through what you love. And we'll see you manana.